Happy New Year, Belmont! It's 2020. We're starting a whole new decade, and I'm here at the Belmont Public Library with Kathy Cohane, Chairman of the Library Board of Library Trustees, and Peter Straziero, the Library Director. Well, we'll look at the past decade a little bit to talk about some of the major happenings in in the last decade. I know you did some homework, and you have like a little list there that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to talk about the decade ahead because there's big things happening here at Belmont Public Library in the decade ahead, no doubt about it. So what do you have on your list there? Thank you. So uh, we wanted to, we're taking a look forward, but we wanted to make sure that we honored the past and all the great things that we did over the last 10 years. So I made a quick list, and I'm not going to read it all, but um, top 10 ideas of the last 10 years, expanded hours and service to children at the library. So in the last few years, we expanded the hours into the evenings, um, and we saw a great return on that. Thousands more people every year serviced in the children's room because of those new hours. Uh, now open seven days a week, year round, closed on national holidays, but otherwise, Monday through Sunday, you can come to the Belmont Public Library. Uh, the library now among the 10th busiest library in Massachusetts. Um, so that's that's been a great leap forward over the last 10 years. Of all the libraries in the state, close to 400, we're now ranked number 10. Um, uh, completed a successful visibility study and a successful schematic and design program for a new library in the future here on site. Um, ch a changing of the guard, so we had a great library team in place, and in the last 10 years, a lot of those people moved on and retired, and a new team, new trustees, a new library director, new staff uh, picked up the torch and has carried it forward. Um, refreshing of spaces at the library to make them more comfortable. Um, consolidated facilities, so this was a big one. We now work a lot closer with the town than we used to, and now have more of an outward-facing approach to our community partnerships, our service relationships, and uh, our relationship overall with town government, much stronger. Um, La and lastly, we, we set and broke every single record that there is. More library programs each year, more circulation each year, more people th through the door each year, more utilization of the website each year, um, and on and on. That's, that's the, the dialed back version of the last 10 years. Okay. And I know Belmont Media Center recently put together a, a time lapse that showed the utilization of this library. Can you tell us a little sure, more about yeah, that? Yeah, we did. The person behind the camera, who I won't expose uh, in this video, helped us a lot. And what we did was we put, a, we put a camera on one of the poles that's behind us here to show the traffic in and out of the parking lot every single day. So we're, we're in process now. We're editing that video. And I think people will be surprised when they see it. Uh, just how many people, close to 1,000 a day, that come to our little Belmont Public Library. And you've been the director for how many years now, Peter? Um, I'm a, about to start my sixth year, five, five and change. Wow, that's, I didn't realize it was been that long. Yeah, about okay. Years, somewhere in there. And Ka Kathy, how long have you been a library trustee? I've been a trustee just for five years, and or actually finishing my sixth, Six. and and then we'll be uh, up for re-election in April. Okay. So let's talk about the, these designs that you mentioned on your list. I mean, there is now a set of designs that that are ready to move forward with the fundraising. So there's this plans for a new library. Can you tell us more about sure, that? Sure, happy to. So I think there, um, you know, the, the designs for the new library we've shared back in November and eager to move forward. So the idea for a, a new library or the need has been in place since the 90s. So this building is one of the, the oldest, most heavily used buildings in town. As Peter noted, a thousand unique visitors. And we also are faced with significant investment and in infrastructure that's needed. So it's the, the point of, of the design is to make sure that we're getting the most for our dollar and the right investment for, for Belmont is a new library building. 
We have gone forward and gotten a schematic design completed. The foundation, which is the fundraising arm, is in place and is poised to do, start driving significant fundraising. Uh, they've committed to multi-million dollars to raise to help defray the overall cost. But when you think about, you know, we talked about the past, um, the past informs the future, and so we really did need to look at how are people using the library, who's using it, for what types of activities. So people will continue to use the library. As we've seen over the last 10 years, huge growth in circulation. More of that's electronic uh, than paper-based, but still paper-based is very strong. People are coming to the library. We, what did we, we uh, over a hundred percent increase in programs offered? Over the uh, last ten years, I think over the last ten years, the adult program was something like two hundred percent increase. We looked just just before our interview, and I think we did sixty three adult programs in fiscal year twenty eleven or twenty ten, and we did close to three hundred last year. So yeah, the proof is in the pudding. So we have a new design. Any any idea what that's going to? cost, what a new library is going to cost? We've, um, so the, the architects that we've worked with who are really the experts uh, currently in Massachusetts for libraries, so the cost is, is uh, expected to be $35 million, but that's assuming that we would build in 2024. We were very purposeful to look ahead, uh, come up with a number that we think is, that, that is, is inclusive and that anticipates that timeline. I think as the high school has seen, uh, construction ex escalation costs are really challenging in this environment. So we factored that in. Our plan is to fundraise over the next two years, go to the voters in town in November of 2022 for a debt exclusion and then that would enable us to start building in 2024. We'd have another year post uh, approval that we would refine the design uh, and then go forward with construction. So we think it's it's prudent, you know, each of us, I, I know Anne Marie Mahoney uses her, her house. Um, I've been using a car, right? It's having a car that has 250,000 miles on it. You need a plan to replace it. And you need to make certain that, uh, am I gonna invest in repairing it or am I gonna replace it? The right investment for Belmont is replacement and we're trying to be very, um, planful and have a long range plan, working with partners, talking to the rink about if that goes forward, how can we partner with that? T working with Jesse Bennett and the traffic advisory on, on, on crosswalks. What do we need now? What, what are we anticipating? So to Peter's point, we've really looked to partner with the town, part, get engagement from the public so that we're building the library that Belmont wants and needs. We're in the right spot. You can hear the traffic. Uh, so we're in the in the right location to service the best of Belmont and, and to access to the school. So we're really excited about it uh, and want everybody to get engaged to make this happen. Now let's talk a little bit more about the partnerships with the town that you mentioned because there is a new high school going up. Yeah. Definitely it'll be done within the next 10 years. Um, how is this new library going to be collaborating with that or, you know, how is, how is the project yeah. working with it? Certainly, yeah. So, uh, Kathy mentioned our collaboration with uh, the RINC program, how we're going to keep in touch with them and keep, keep abreast of the plans there. So, in the same vein, we've done the exact same thing with the town. So, Kathy referenced uh, probably a fall of 22 is the hopeful time to go back to the town for a vote. Uh, this decision didn't come to us overnight and it didn't come lightly. And we didn't come up with that timeline. We did that together. So we worked with Patrice Garvin, with her team, with the Board of Selectmen, and with all the other uh, the judiciary committees in town to determine what was the right time. We've got an override coming, which we hope is successful. And we wanted to make sure that it was the right time for the folks behind that effort, uh, which we're in full support of. And you know, so that the burden wasn't placed on the taxpayers all at the same time, so that it made the most sense with tax bills coming out for the high school, with the plans for an override you know, we, we wanted to measure that out. So again, my, my long-winded point, we made that decision together. So how will this new library, if it happens, benefit uh, the high school? Like, will kids be able to use it? Will you have things for the high school students? Like, will the new design include more things for high school students? 
So I think as, if folks have seen the design, if you haven't come by the library, the boards are up. Uh, one of the things that's envisioned in the new design is more space for teens. Uh, we, we've taken over part of the reference room and redesigned it for, for the teens today. It's a great spot, it's just not big enough. So I think we're in within walking distance of five of the major schools. Uh, and so you do see after hours, you know, the kids come by. And so we will expand the space for the teens and that age group. Um, dedicated space, which almost every library has. There'll be quiet study rooms, small meeting rooms for collaboration. That's really the style of education today is collaboration and teamwork. Already today, I think there's strong partnership with the school department. Peter can speak to that, but you know, as the school budget has gotten uh, curtailed and library positions eliminated, the public library staff and Peter's team have really stepped in to partner and provide some of those services that had in the past been provided by, by the school department. I don't know if you want to speak to sure, that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just, just a bridge to that. So, of course, we have a great relationship with the school department, but the relationship goes beyond that. You know, your listeners will know that there's no community center in this town. There's no recreation center in this town. So, uh, correct, yeah, which is, pr you know, primarily used by seniors but open for all ages. But there's no, the rec department has to look for places to hold their events, you know. So we partner closely with John Marshall and with his team in the rec department, as well as John Phelan and the school department. Um, because when you really look around at the resources in town, this is your community center. This, this is what's available. And our, our new library will continue to be that community center. Well, I know that the current library has needs, and you are still putting some money into it because can't wait on some of these needs necessarily, but it's almost like, I feel bad, it's almost like throwing money down the drain. Like, what are some of the projects you've had to do recently? Sure. Like, I think Gutters was one of them. So, um, yeah, you know, and we're very prudent uh, when we make those decisions. And it's really, ba it's based on needs, not wants. It's all, any, any money we put into this building is focused on either health or safety. That's it. Um, so in one case, we, we have to work on the gutters because they're falling apart. There's holes in the gutters, and in the wintertime, ice dams up, then drips through the gutters as it melts and creates, you know, ice pools right on the entry points uh, at the two doors. So things like that, you know, those, those are the places where we have to invest money. But it's, um, it's a very, very minimal amount. You need to add something? Sure. I will, I will. <laughs> but so one of the things, and that's really health and safety has been kind of from the trustees in terms of spending money. But we have, in, in just acknowledging the times, some of the things that we have done in the past and will continue to invest in, we put automatic door locks on, health and safety issue. We have panic buttons that we've installed. Um, it's just a sign of the times. We need to, we need, we need to make those investments. Uh, we put in a new boiler. We've put in, um, there was no insulation in the ceiling. Uh, so we put in insulation, but worked again with facilities to get a Green Communities Grant. So we will continue to do that uh, because we have to, but I think we're optimistic with where we are and the, the response we've gotten from the town, uh, which is why, and, and we understand the burden on taxpayers, but people need to understand there will be material investment required whether it's, it's rehabbing this building and bringing it up to code and ADA compliance, which would be in excess of $20 million if you ramp up the cost from the feasibility study versus that which is unexpected for a new building that will meet the needs of Belmont. So, but I think we, we, we're very measured in terms of what we're spending money on, but do those things that are health and safety. Right. Now, you don't know what the debt exclusion amount is going to be yet. We don't know that yet. No, we don't. So again, the foundation, uh, chaired by David Stevader, is working on what their goal is. And they're expecting that at the end of March, beginning of April, they'll come out and publicize what their goal is for fundraising. So in the, the target is what they've committed multiple millions of dollars to defray the cost. We're also exploring any other options for grants that are out there. Um, there is no, or in terms of the state grants, just to be clear, 
there is the funding is not there for state grants and i think as people have found with the high school when there are programs such as that uh, and there's money provided that there are certain requirements that come with it so if we in the past the the grant rounds that we had to give the money back for twice not once twice um, it would have been a builder, bigger building than the one that we're proposing. So we've right-sized the building on this location and with strong input from the community and, and trying to balance the needs of the community, but there will be expenses. So I, I think it's really the right decision is a new building. The foundation will come out with, with, with their target uh, and, and you know any donation, small or large, is gonna help us. And, and help us move towards that goal. Uh, did you say there will be an opportunity to go for a grant again? Yeah, so, so Not the, in the next 10 years? Uh, <laughs> no. The money's committed until FY33. Go ahead. Um, so without, without going too far down this rabbit hole, um, there are 17 projects in Massachusetts, all public libraries, that have been approved by the Mass Board of Library Commissioners for an LSTA building grant. And all those funds will be distributed o over the next 14 years. And it's believed that if uh, the bond isn't raised by the state to allow more millions to be spent per year, that it will be, it'll be 2033 before those projects are completed. So if, if a lot of ifs, if that were all to stay that way, they may have another grant round. It may be in 2029. And then those projects that would be approved may be approved after FY 33 or 34. And that would go out for 10 or 15 years. So if, 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 then Belmont would be maybe on a list, you know, in the 2040s, you know, sometime from now. I want to talk about what you're up against with this debt exclusion because you're definitely going to be, there's going to be some opposition, no doubt. And people might say, well, you know, do you really need a library? Because everything's going paperless now, right? People might say, um, you know, it's not just Belmont people using the library, so why should Belmont taxpayers pay for it? This is what I've been hearing. This is what I'm repeating. So how are you, I mean, how are you going to face these obstacles? And how are you feeling about this, Kathy? <laughs> Uh, I'm actually feeling optimistic. I, I, you know, I'm a taxpayer too. I, I see what happens to my tax bill. Uh, but again, um, the library, so I think, you know, which is why we felt it was important to cover where we've been. Because people are continuing to use the library. They use it differently. And so, so w there is very much a need for a library. And yes, there are libraries in Watertown and in, in other communities and part of the Minuteman network. We can participate in those libraries because we're part of the Minuteman me network. If we didn't have a library in Belmont, we would not have that same flexibility that, that, we, uh, that we enjoy today. So yes, I think there, you know, we as a community are paying for the deferred maintenance and the lack of investment and by um, leadership teams in the past. And so, yep, it, 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 it's a challenge, which is why we want to fundraise as much as we can. And, you know, it could be that the impact of the debt override is a cup of coffee a week. And if you were to ask me as a taxpayer, you know, a, a cup of coffee a week, two cups of coffee a week, is, is that worth it for a new library, a 21st, 22nd century library? Absolutely it is. But I have to ask, Starbucks or Dunkin'? <laughs> okay, we won't get into that. Um, <laughs> but in all seriousness, you are running again. You are running again in the upcoming town election for library trustee again. Why, why do you want to be library trustee? Why is that important to you? I mean, you could say, I'm retired. I don't need this aggravation, right? Um, I, you may have spoken to my husband, but um, no, I think because to me, the library, when you think about the programs and services, we serve people from, from birth to grave. And so there's something for everybody. It is, and so I don't have kids in the school system anymore. Uh, and so, I, but I benefited from that. But when you look at the population and what we serve, you know, bringing information and access to information to everybody to teach literacy skills for program, for community, for engagement. 
it's just, it's a, it's a wonderful, magical place. And I would say to anybody who hasn't been to the library um, in a while, come and see what we have to offer and think about what it could be. Some of what we want to do, we're constrained in this current building. So why do I run? Because it serves everybody in the town of Belmont uh, and you know, most heavily used building, low budget, but the best value and you know, really expanding access to all. So I, I think it's, I believe in the mission. So, and I hope for you to get your vote. <laughs> A little pitch there. Um, Peter, as library director, what are your greatest hopes for this library in the next 10 years? Sure. So I want to be part of the team that gets this done. Um, I've been here for five years. I'm going into my sixth year. This is why I came here. Um, I've worked in libraries for 15 years. I'll work in libraries for 15 more and then some years. Uh, I want this. Uh, I want the feather in our cap. I, I want to be part of the group that gets this done for Belmont so we have this lasting effect. Um, you know, maybe I'm the wrong person to ask because libraries are such a central part of my life. But all my best friends are people I met in libraries. Uh, my wife is somebody I met in a library. You know, my life was changed in a library when I was like five years old, and I was marching on a path to this interview all those years up until now. You know, I want to create a place where that's going to happen for more people because um, it's transformative. You know, you create everything at the library now. You don't just create thoughts and ideas and goals. You create relationships and friendships. And the new library will be creating music and creating video and creating whatever they create in a maker space. You know, the, there's a lot that's going to happen here. And I want to be able to say that I was part of the team that made a difference. Final question related to the library in the next decade. How are you going to get a yes vote on this debt exclusion? That's a great question. Um, the way we're going to do it is we're just going to state our case uh, clearly and plainly. You know, we're we're a deserving group. You know, we were one of the four big uh, projects that the major capital projects working group had identified some years ago, um, led by um, Mark Palillo and others. And they identified the high school, the DPW building, the police, and the library. Uh, we were good partners of that process. Uh, we watched six, uh, all of our colleagues in those other departments go through the, that successfully. And now it's our turn. You know, um, we've waited. We're, we're working with, in partnership with the town. Um, we supplied funding for the visibility study. We also supplied funding for the schematic design. And we're going to supply money uh, through fundraising for the building project itself. So I think if people really take the time and really look at the process we've gone through, how collaborative it's been, and how much Belmont really controlled the process, I, I think we'll, we'll get the votes that we need.